Hi everyone, I'm going to be talking about templated HTML and we're going to be creating a, an application that kind of displays when and where teachers are going uh, for summer vacation um, as a way to kind of coordinate, you know, what your, you know, with your colleagues about what fun stuff you're doing on your vacations after 10 months of stress and stress and all the things that come with teaching. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be using the Google Apps Script templated HTML. Um, and you can read more in depth in the documentation, but I'm going to be just kind of demonstrating what it does here. So I already have this form created. I already have a few um, entries in there, but now I want to show this on an HTML page so that everyone can see it. Um, and so I'm going to create a Google Apps Script. And very simply, we run that do get trigger with the event parameter E. Now I want to get a sheet ID from that parameter uh, value and I'm going to call that sheet underscore ID and what this is going to do is oh, I'll explain this before I get to finishing this I'm going to call it summer vacation demonstration demonstration can't type okay so what this E is going to do when I deploy this as a web app I'm going to pass in a sheet ID um, which comes from the URL of your sheet that is linked to your forms. Now the reason for that is so that I can then share this page with other users. Um, you know, you're, you're going to make this stuff uh, able to be viewed by um, anyone and then you've got a cool little visualization of, of um, where people are going. But I'll, I'll uh, talk more about that in one second once we code this out. I'm going to declare an HTML valuable valuable variable HTML service dot create create we're going to create a template from file. Usually I would do the HTML output from file. However, because we're going to be using the templating service in Google Apps Script, we're going to create this template from file and I'm going to call it summer vacation and that is then I'm going to return html.evaluate and I'm going to set the title of the page I cannot type tonight set title summer vacation yeah cannot type tonight so what this is doing is it's creating this template and from an HTML file that we're going to put into our project here called Summer Vacations. Oops, not Summer Vacations, Summer Vacation. Summer Vacation. There we go, perfect. And that's just, we're going to leave that blank for right now. But before we send it to the page, we have to run this evaluate method on it. Normally, if we just create HTML, uh, output from a file. We don't need to do this evaluate, but what this is doing is it's telling the server to take what's in this file and actually pre-render uh, what's in it. So we can actually put some Google Apps Script code right into this HTML page. And I'll show more about that in a second. The really handy thing about this is it allows us to um, uh, g get all of the stuff from our sheet before rendering the page and then kind of pushing it right into the HTML and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, we're going to get the responses and we need to get the sheet itself and I'm going to call this um, spreadsheet app dot get oh, no I want to open by ID open by not by URL by by ID and this is going to be the sheet ID. Now then I want to take those responses and I want to get the data range and then I want to get values 
And that'll give us an array, a multi-dimensional array. And we're going to actually set that into this HTML variable. We're going to say HTML.responses equals responses get data range get values. Now I've basically just created a variable on our template that we can use in our sheet. So I'm going to say um, this is how you use the most basic way to use the templating language is just with these uh, it's a what is it a kind of a triangle bracket and then question mark and then to close it you have a question mark and then the other is that is that less than so it's a greater than sign and then the less than sign and inside of here we can actually reference that responses um, that responses variable and because we just want to print it to the screen we can use this equal and what that does is it'll just push right to the screen our responses variable so I'm going to go ahead and deploy this or sorry publish this as a web app I'm going to execute it as the user accessing the app and right only myself has access to it you can change the permissions to um, uh, to meet your own needs. So I need to give myself permission and I'm going to allow and I don't have a sheet ID in here. So if you remember I was talking about that parameter value where I need to push in the sheet ID this is how I'm going to do that. In the URL, I've got question mark sheet ID equals, and I'm just going to put that ID right in there. Now, you just see a bunch of text in here. Um, where is that coming from? Very simply, it's just that responses all is a kind of one string pushed together. Now, that's not ideal, not the best way to um, show those things. So I'm going to actually add some code here to um, make this look a little cleaner. And I'm going to actually fast forward through it. So stay tuned for a few seconds, and I will have added some more JavaScript to make this look a little bit better. Okay, so what I basically just did there was I created a couple of functions to grab all of the data from this sheet, um, kind of reformat it into a nice little object, um, and to get a uh, kind of an image that is going to represent um, the city name that you put into the form here. So one of the questions the form asks is where are you going, um, and it lets you kind of choose a city name and it'll be kind of a, uh, a cool little way to um, display uh, the I don't know, vacation spots. So let's go back to the templating here. Um, and basically inside of these tags, these uh, little question mark tags, it allows you to put kind of some basic JavaScript in there. So what we're going to do is since we have access to that responses very in the do get method here. I've got this HTML responses. Um, and then I'm basically parsing those responses and then sorting them by the start. Okay, parsing them into an object that looks like this with email, name, location, map URL, start and end. And then I'm going to sort them by that start date. And then I'm going to send them to the sheet. So let me loop through them just in a very basic um, you know, for loop with i as an iterator, and we'll go responses.length, and then increment that, and open the um, open the curly brackets here. Now, to close it, we've got to actually create another set of tags in here, 
and then close that for loop. Everything inside of here is going to get re repeated over and over again. And what we can do is I'm going to put this equal sign and I'm going to show that I in this tag. And when I refresh this page, I should just get the numbers one, two, whoops, didn't type response, responses, responses, line 26 in the code. Can't type. Where am I here? Respond, responses. Okay. Sorry about that. And zero, one, two, three, because there's four elements. Oh, I guess there's there's three really, so it's probably counting this empty line here. But that's okay. Um, what we're going to do is actually make this display a little bit better here. So I want to create a div and like close that div. And inside the div, I'm going to have, let's see. Um, how about an image with a source, leave that empty for right now, and then I'm going to have an h1, close that, and whoops, an h2, no, h, make that much smaller, h4, actually this h1s are probably too big, header 1s is too big, h2, so this image source is going to be Let's use those templated um, markers here. And that's going to be responses, I, and the key is, I believe, map URL. Then in the H2, I'm going to put these little markers there for this for some templating. And I'm going to have responses, I, and dot name and let's then do responses I and we'll say dot start I actually need to make this sorry that equal sign equal sign equal sign yep that'll work uh, start and let's then do a hyphen and again, responses, I dot end. So it'll show, whoops, and I forgot that equal sign because we're printing it to the screen. So now I should get some divs, um, name, when do you, ah, that's what it's doing. So um, uh, that looks pretty cool so far. Uh, it's got a map error because I'm counting the very first row here with those uh, with those values, but I don't want to do that. So let me go back into my parsed responses, and where I've got bar i equals zero, i values that length i plus plus. I'm gonna actually start with one, so it'll start on that first row, and it'll only grab data. It won't grab the that header row. Um, and now I should see a map of Izmir. A map of Richmond, map of Markham, Ontario. Perfect. And you see these very long uh, strings down here. That's not the best way to display that. There's actually a JavaScript um, date object that we can use. And because you can type JavaScript in here, I'm going to actually just go ahead and do new date. And then I'm going to pass in that um, time string. And I'm going to say to date string. The method on that date object, and I'll do the same thing for the end value, new date, and then to date string. I'm just getting a little bit long. Perfect, those are a little bit shorter, a little more readable there. There's other ways that you can format these dates, but uh, that's not really the purpose of this video. Um, now, I also want the, hmm, I want the, um, I want these, I want the text to uh, overlay on these images. So, um, 
I'm going to actually fast forward through. Okay, so I've added a little bit of styling here so that um, you know, it centers these images. Um, when you hover on them, it tells you uh, who's going. Um, and you'll even see when I go in here and let's say I add another um, response, I can just refresh the page and um, I'll make the name different, uh, um, Steve. And where am I going? Let's say I'm going to, um, hmm, how about Osaka, Japan? I'm going to leave in let's say at the end of the week, and then I'm coming back September 1st. And I'm going to submit that trip. And when I refresh this page, I should see Osaka, Japan um, in the list. There we go, Stephen, Osaka, Japan. There's all kinds of cool ways that you could improve on this, maybe linking email addresses. So if you notice that some, you know one of your friends is going to the same place, you can uh, discuss it, um, you know, changing the fonts. It's all kinds of cool things, but I really wanted to kind of get across how cool the templating uh, can be in Google Apps Script. So um, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, um, send me some comments. Uh, what more can I show you about templating? Um, or if you have an idea that um, maybe I could help you uh, create with Google Apps Script, send me a message, post a comment, or hit me up on Twitter. Talk to you guys soon.